Um, our next presentation is by Global Fishing Watch, talking to advancing ocean governance through increased transparency of human activities at sea. My name is David Krudzma, and I am the Director of Research and Innovation at Global Fishing Watch. Global Fishing Watch is an international nonprofit organization that seeks to improve how we manage the world's ocean by providing increased transparency. We process terabytes of data about vessel activity to reveal human activity at sea. What you see here is an animation of fishing activity of tens of thousands of fishing vessels, which you can also see at globalfishingwatch.org. Much of this data is information from the Automatic Identification System, or AIS. Large ocean-going vessels broadcast their GPS positions via AIS to avoid collisions and promote safety at sea. These AIS messages, though, can be recorded by satellite and terrestrial receivers. In a Global Fishing Watch, we have organized a vast database of vessel positions. We then use machine learning to identify which of these vessels are fishing vessels and when they are fishing. In 2019, working with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, or FAO, we published the Global Atlas of AIS-based fishing activity. We collaborated with regional experts all over the world to map fishing activity from, every, from AIS for every FAO statistical area, and we compared this activity with fishery statistics for each region. We found that in some regions, such as areas 27, which includes much of Northern and Western Europe, AIS does a reasonably good job of identifying fishing activity because most large vessels use AIS. In other regions, the results were mixed. Here, in Region 71, AIS does a good job at monitoring fishing activity by tuna vessels in, in the um, pelagic regions of the Pacific and in, in, in the high seas. However, few vessels in Southeast Asia broadcast AIS, and thus we see less fishing activity. In the Mediterranean, we found that AIS revealed most of the industrial fishing activity in the northern part of the basin. In the southern part, along the coast of Africa, however, Fewer vessels broadcast AIS, and we do not see the fishing activity. To learn more about how to use AIS and identify and understand fishing activity, we recommend downloading the Global Atlas of AIS-based fishing activity. Go to bit.loi slash AIS underscore atlas. As we enter the UN Decade of Ocean Science, we are now partnering with the FAO to build on this research and map activity by vessels not broadcasting their GPS positions. One of the ways we are doing this is with satellite radar. Radar can identify all human-made objects on the water, and we are now processing petabytes of imagery from the European Space Agency. Here you see one year's worth of detections from satellite radar in the Mediterranean. Each purple dot on this map is where we detected a vessel at some point in the year. We combine this data with AIS data and then also build models to estimate which of the radar detections are likely fishing vessels. There's, the result is this map of likely fishing from radar. Unlike the AIS data, in the radar data, we can reveal fishing activity in both the Northern and Southern Mediterranean. We are also starting to process optical satellite imagery, which allows us to count vessels in the same way. Here is one satellite image of pair trawlers from the sa satellite company, Planet. The black circles are where our machine learning models identified fishing vessels. By combining satellite imagery with vessel GPS data, we will be able to identify the full extent of industrial fishing activity globally. It is our belief that more transparent information about how humanity is using the world's ocean can help us manage them better. We look forward to working with the UN FAO to help realize this goal and further the aims of the UN Decade of Ocean Science. Thanks, Courtney Farling, for sharing the presentation of the Global Fishing Watch team. Um, my question here goes to the issues of transparency within the algorithms that are being built to make these assessments. Consider their sensitive in nature. What's your feeling on the kinds of standards we need to develop as a community, we need to agree on so that we can progress in ensuring that issues of privacy are dealt with, but we can progress as technology improves. Yeah, thank you, Kim, and thank you for having me. I'm standing in for David this morning as our technical director. I'm on the government side, so do um, be kind when my technical answers perhaps aren't quite up to his, his level. Um, he should be joining us shortly, though, so he can follow up. 
the um, question you raise is an important one and something that we have um, talked about extensively at Global Fishing Watching with our government partners. It's very important that we set standards around transparency and that they are the same across the board for each government that we work with. We um, manage that ourselves by ensuring that any information that we make public, so the analysis of our AIS data, which is already publicly available, but our analysis of it is um, redacted. It's not all the information that we receive, it's just a, a small subsection of it and is delayed by 72 hours so that there's no concerns about commercial sensitivities and locations for fishing activity. Thank you very much, Courtney. Um, Matt, have you got any questions? Yeah, thanks so much, Courtney, for stepping in so quickly um, at such short notice. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in um, the sort of long-term trajectory of Global Fishing Watch and how you see um, and, and, and learning how you've developed as, uh, and where you see that you're, you're heading towards as well, because you know, there, there are many people that are starting to use your, your data set. Um, and as time passes, also there's technology that's advancing, uh, which is giving even more insight, um, say from the IIRS data or you know, um, other, uh, other data such as that. Um, what's the plan um, in the future? Yeah, thank you, Matt. That's a really good question. I mean, Global Fishing Watch was set up um, as a kind of spin-off from Google, Sky Truth and Oceana a few years ago. It was very much um, initially research. What can we do? What can we see? How can it be used? And we have progressed since then. We have a government um, relations kind of team and we work with um, eight governments directly to provide them um, MCS support. And I think that that is the way that it's going. I think that there is clear recognition that business as usual and costly enforcement methods um, that governments are employing have not allowed us to achieve the sustainable development ag agenda and the SDGs on time. And people are looking to towards more cost-effective solutions. Um, transparency is free, the data is already there and Global Fishing Watch is working to get it to as many people as possible and increase data equity. Um, in future, I think that this will become more of a norm. I hope that we will see more people embracing a transparent approach to fisheries management and not replacing traditional systems, but using it as an additional data source that they could use to cross check their information. Certainly we're seeing flag, coastal and port states adopting this um, as a tool. Thank you very much, Courtney. Uh, it's been a theme of the meeting so far, a move from quantity to quality, but also the story about the fact that there is a huge quantity of data out there and pushing that data into quality information, which is something that your, your project's working on. Thanks for that.